Hello everybody, welcome back to the 25 Days of Linux, the video series in which I'm attempting to upload a video every single day for the month of December. That's a stupid intro, I think I'm, this is the last video for that one. Uh, today, we're going to take a look at uh, one of my favorite uh, Vim extensions, the uh, Conqueror of Completion. This is a really cool uh, Vim extension. I think the last time that I was talking about Vim in a video or my Vim config in a video, I sort of mentioned this offhand, didn't go very much into it and said, oh, you really kind of deserve this own video. Well, this is that video, so let's get into it. Basically what uh, Conqueror of Completion does, coc.invim, is it sort of takes Vim to a place that's uh, more similar to the text editors that you might be more familiar with. Stuff like Atom and VS Code and Sublime and that kind of stuff that has pretty powerful code completion and that kind of thing built in. Also, the cool thing about this particular plugin as compared to other ones is they all sort of have a dependency that they use, but the only one that you really need uh, for this particular plugin is Node. JS, which if you need to install it, there's a curl command right here you can use. Uh, so then all you need to do is actually install the plugin, which is really, really easy to do. You can see right here, uh, it gives you the code right here to install it. Basically the way this works is if you go into your config for NeoVim, which is going to be in config slash nvim init.vim, right up here, assuming you're using vim plug, is where you install all of your plugins. And uh, literally all you need to do is add a line right here to install NeoVim. Uh, but then all you would need to do is run plug install uh, and it'll be up to date. Now, this is a, a really, really powerful app, but you know, it, it is sort of a Vim plugin. So it's, it's a little wonky, not wonky. It's just things need to be done manually that sometimes wouldn't need to be done manually. If you come over to the GitHub page, you can see basically what it wants you to do is install different libraries for all of the different file types that you might want to edit. So you can see here, you can install extensions for COC, like uh, COC JSON, COC TS server, that type of thing. And if you were to actually just right click right here using COC extensions, it'll open up a whole page on their wiki that sort of explains how these work. So what I'll do is maybe I'll go into them and I'll try to find a CSS file. So I'll look for main.css and okay, cool. Here's the index CSS page. I don't know why that got pulled up, but here's the CSS page. And let's say I want to down here, let's um, in a media query, let's say I want to select a new class. So I'll say I want to type in the H3 and, uh, you know, surround that in squiggly brackets. And then let's say I want to adjust the width for this and we'll set it to 100%. I don't know. You can sort of see this is how Vim works by default. But what I can do, I don't know why I saved those changes. What I can do is I can go ahead and run COC install coc css and you see here it's going to open up another window it's going to download a little extension for us css and i guess maybe i could close that file reopen it i don't know if that's totally necessary but i'll go ahead and open up index.css again come down to the bottom and now let's try that again so i'm going to select the h3 uh do the squiggly brackets again and you can see pretty much immediately it's going to be giving me more up-to-date information. So it's going to be telling me like, hey, you selected the H3, but you're putting nothing in it. I assume that's what that warning sign means. You can see as I start to type in sort of a selector, it's giving me much more in terms of auto-complete selections. And even as I scroll through the auto-complete, it's giving me information about what the different things would do. As I'm, you know, then putting in the actual value that I want to use, it's giving me more. Everything that I try to type in, it's just going to function much more like the text editors that you might be used to with their completion engines built in. Um, uh, now, one other extension you should probably install is we're going to go ahead and do coc install coc json. Even if you don't really write JSON files normally, uh, the reason that we're doing that is because the config file for coc is actually written in JSON. So, you know, why not have that? So, once we have that, we can go ahead and run coc config. And you can see now it's opened up a new file in infim coc settings.json. Uh, the reason that this is important is because if we come back over to the GitHub page, you can see you can install extensions the way that we have been by using the coc install command, or you can configure language servers in coc dash settings json which is what we just opened up uh, now if you come down and you click this link right here uh, configure language servers 
Um, basically, this is a guide on their wiki to setting up COC to work with whatever uh, le language you want. This whole file just contains uh, explanations for how to get this to work with every language. And there are links up top here that will take you where you want to go. So let's say we've got uh, completion for CSS. Natural next step would be uh, to add some completion for HTML. So you can see it wants us to use the extension coc.html it also has a link to that uh so you know it's it's on github it's open source you can make changes to it if you want and there's also uh information here about how to configure it if you want to do any additional configuration but you know hey let's uh sit out of the config real quick go back into them and uh let's do the old coc install coc-html and then if we open up let's say my index.html file Boom, look at that. Here we have an HTML file. And if I want to, you know, let's say we're gonna add a footer tag here, uh, close it. You can see it's doing basically the same thing. It's just acting the same way the completion engine would, much more advanced than what Vim's completion engine can do by default. You know, you, you probably saw it there, but just if I open a tag, automatically it sort of knows what tags I haven't closed. Uh, and you can sort of push that. Like, let's say, let's open up a footer tag here. And let's open an HTML tag here. And let's see, it thinks I want to close the HTML. Makes sense. That was the most recent open. And if I come down and I want to close another one, it then knows I want to close the footer and it even fixes the indentation for me so you know it's, it's just functioning more like most text editors would um, now if we go back into that coc config file the reason that this exists is because you can see uh, some of the languages out here so let's find an example here haskell it actually doesn't have just an extension that you can install it wants you to set up a language server Usually a lot of the actual programming languages, it wants you to set up a language server for. So here we go. Uh, this is C, C++ and Objective-C, right? So you can see here, it wants us to use this language server that we would have to paste into that JSON file in order to, you know, get COC to work with C and C++ and Objective-C and all that. Um, I think the only really C file that I have is maybe if I go into my suckless folders, uh, maybe my D menu. I'm pretty sure the like config.mk is a C file, or uh, maybe that's not the best example. Maybe we could do the config.def.h. Uh, that's a config static cons. I don't know how to write C, so I'm not really going to be able to give you any uh, details as to whether or not this is a good experience uh, as far as uh, completion goes. Uh, but like you see, with most of the programming languages, they have a whole lot in terms of customization that you can do. You can sort of click in here uh, and see more information about all of these language servers, get information about uh, customizing them. Uh, this is a really, really cool plugin. It makes using uh, Vim a whole lot easier if you're actually writing code, which isn't something that I do very often. The closest thing that I do to writing code is maintaining my website and writing a shell script from time to time, but this actually does come in handy there. There is a bash or, or a COC shell extension that you can uh, install. So, you know, if I run COC install COC dash shell, look at that. It goes through uh, NPM to install, so I find that that usually takes a little bit longer than other uh, methods of installing apps, but you know, whatever. It's probably downloading a decent amount of data. But once that's installed, you know, let's see, let's uh, go into a script that I have. Uh, let's see, maybe, oh, hey, how about uh, one of those uh, scripts that I made in this video series here? How about that? Um, you know, now I could say, uh, you know, if we want to import, you know, I mean, it's all the things that it's, it's just completion. It's not that complicated. I'm not that good at writing shell scripts, so I can't think of an example where this would be immediately useful, but it's handy. If you're writing scripts, if you're doing any programming, even if you're just working on websites, it's a really super handy tool to have. And uh, now it's got its own video on my channel. So thank you everybody for watching. Be sure to check back here tomorrow if you want to see uh, more of these videos every day. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.